the way that an autistic per person or a person with autism's mind works is just, it's so interesting because the gears move in a completely different way. Metaphors and a lot of social cues just don't make sense to them because their world is so black and white and everything is, has to be organized and in, in a certain way and things work a certain way and there are rules to everything. But there isn't anything outside our universe, Reverend Peters. There isn't another kind of place altogether. Except there might be if you go through a black hole. Which means that it is impossible to find out what's on the other side. And the gravity of a black hole is so big that even electromagnetic waves like light can't get out of it. And electromagnetic waves are how we get information about things which are far away. And if heaven was on the other side of a black hole, then dead people would have to be fired into space on a rocket to get there. And they aren't, or people would notice. The little milestones that would seem like no big deal are really what makes the difference. All people act differently with it. Like some people are uncomfortable, some try to be like nicer and almost like, I feel like some people almost talk down. I think it's um, due to ignorance or lack of information on the matter. Because like Christopher, he's brilliant. That was also incredibly difficult to sort of accurately represent that without any offense caused to anybody or, or uh, just making it unintentionally funny. That was the worst thing that I could have th thought of. That, 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 that was uh, my biggest fear, was, was doing it to the point where people would laugh at me when I came on stage. Uh, and I wanted it to seem like it was real, and I was really delving into the mind of Christopher John Francis Boone. To be a good astronaut, you have to be intelligent. And I am intelligent. You also have to understand how machines work. And I am good at understanding how machines work. You would also have to be someone who would like being on their own in a tiny spacecraft thousands and thousands of miles away from the surface of the Earth and not panic or get claustrophobia or homesick or insane. And I really like little spaces so long as there is no one else in them with me. By being who we are, we can accomplish pretty much anything. Fortunately, the British accent came pretty easy to me because my family is very theatrical and likes to do a lot of accents and voices and things all the time, even when we're just speaking to each other at home. Because when people tell you what to do, it is usually confusing and does not make sense. For example, people often say, be quiet, but they don't tell you how long to be quiet for. It actually worked out really well for me because I go to a sleepaway camp um, that has international campers and counselors, and the cabin that I stayed in for a month had a girl who was from England and who had a British accent. And so I kind of just got used to it, listening to it all the time. And like, I would ask her certain things. And then I came home and school started a week later. And then auditions were quite early after that. And so it, it just was kind of ingrained in me with that experience, which just worked out really well. So that was nice. Well, one of the reasons I tr tried out for this play is because of the British accent because I'm a big soccer fan so I'm always kind of around that whenever it's on TV or whenever I'm watching videos online so it came quite naturally to me and it was very interesting so it wasn't a tougher challenge for me it was a, a little bit easier. Who's your favorite football team? Uh, Liverpool. Definitely. Um, so it hurt to have to wear that Manchester United scarf. I was. I said to the costume designers, "Is there any way we could avoid that?" And they they weren't able to avoid it. But um, I really struggled with an English accent. Actually, I spent a lot of time with Miss Camara, who came every Thursday, and she kind of reviewed my lines with me and told me what to say differently. I watched the recording of the show when it was on Broadway a lot, and I actually met with Mrs. Camara's mother, and she was really nice, and she helped me with some tips and she brought me some Battenberg cake which is cool yeah <laughs> so in the in the show when I asked Christopher if he wants to come in for tea I offered him some Battenberg cake which is strange taste not exactly like American cakes but it's really good first I went to um, my voice coach and uh, she was like she was like here's what you should do watch Harry Potter <laughs> watch a few clips of Hermione before your audition so that's kind of what I did I would watch a few clips of that to like get into the mood and everything you've got dirt on your nose by the way did you know just there I was actually kind of uh, a little pumped up you could say when I heard that it was going to be a, a British accent for the play uh, I happen to watch a lot of uh, British shows um, on BBC America, uh, like Doctor Who and all that. So I kind of already had a, a little feel for it. Oh gosh, at first it was a little 
wobbly like I like at first like I listened to theirs and then I would go home and I would watch like videos like and especially like just looking up stuff on the play you could hear the, a the actors accents so it was interesting at first and then I, I kind of got the hang of it <laughs> I think um the accent was hard the accent was hard uh, I, I had a lot of trouble with it what I ended up doing is I um I read a lot of essays and a lot of uh, like wiki blogs on how to have a British accent, but um, most importantly, I watched a lot of TV, a lot of news, um, and like interviews from the town that Christopher and Ed are from, and and like I, if it's just watching the weather one day or seeing a newscast or even watching like a show like <laughs> Downton Abbey. It never occurred to him that you wouldn't have a son. Well, I didn't. No. Did not. Or something like that, just like little clips at a time, it kind of got me in the sense of like what it would be like to have a British accent. Yeah. Well, I, when I was younger, I mean, I've always been, I loved English accents and so I've been doing them for a while just for fun. But obviously I did have that, have it critiqued and work on it with Miss Camera, who uh, is a teacher at the Bethany Middle School who came in to help us because she has a British accent. And she did critique me on some things, but I think that at the end of the day, I, I, I got it to the best of my ability. I do not tell lies. Mother used to say this was because I am a good person. But it is not because I am a good person. It is because I cannot tell lies. And just over time, what was originally just going for it and pretty awful, uh, we just kind of molded it and kept on getting it better and better until what we have in the final show. Jolly good. Well, I one of the first rehearsals that we had, uh, Mr. Kennedy was like, um, Macy just act like a door and I was like I don't know how to do that yeah there were a few times he was like be more like a door and I was like okay <laughs> and then I also had to play the ATM machine which was like I had to be like all robotic and happy um, we're actually like family friends with the Kennedys and we um, saw them at our both of our little sisters were at the middle school play they were in the middle school musical, so we were like, oh, Mr. Kennedy, you want to see a picture of our puppy? And he was like, oh my god, that's a perfect puppy. Can you, does he want to be in our play? So it just worked out that way. Confetti! Yeah.